information. A quadrilateral sided polygon, which means that it's a shape that has four sides. But those four sides can come in many different varieties. Let's go over five different categories. We have rectangle, parallelogram, square, rhombus, and trapezoid. I gotta get out of here. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four right angles. Because it has four right angles, its opposite sides are parallel and its adjacent sides are perpendicular to one another. And look at this. If we take our rectangle and scrunch it to one side, we get a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has opposite sides parallel. Now its angles are no longer right angles, but its opposite sides are all still parallel. It also has two congruent pairs of supplementary angles. A square is a rectangle whose four sides are congruent. So a square has right angles, parallel sides, and congruent sides. A square is a form of rhombus. A rhombus is any quadrilateral with four congruent parallel sides. And by the way, the plural form of rhombus is rhombi, just like a cactus. One cactus, two cacti. One rhombus, two rhombi. And now, back to our program. There's one more shape. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with only one pair of parallel sides. In this trapezoid, segments AB and DC are parallel. Of these five categories of shapes, we'll spend a lot of time with parallelograms because the parallelogram category contains not just parallelograms, but also rectangles, squares, and rhombi. Think about it. Parallelograms have opposite sides parallel, and that's also true of rectangles, squares, and rhombi. So all rectangles, squares, and rhombi are also parallelograms. But not all parallelograms are either a rectangle, square, or rhombus. You got it? There are some key theorems regarding parallelograms that we've got for you. We'll look at these theorems about parallelograms so we can see how our earlier parallel line and triangle theorems can be used with other shapes. Theorem. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Let's prove it. Given that ABCD is a parallelogram, prove that segments AB and CD are congruent and segments AD and BC are congruent. Our first step is to state our given information. ABCD is a parallelogram. Now we need to set up some triangles. So we draw diagonal BD as our second step. Our reason is, through any two points there is exactly one line. Now we have two triangles, ABD and CDB. Next, we'll say that AB is parallel to CD and AD is parallel to BC. Why? Because this is the definition of a parallelogram. Now we have parallel lines and a transversal going on, and we can really figure out some angle correspondences. For our fourth step, we'll state that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, thanks to the alternate interior angle theorem. So, for our fifth step, we'll use the ever-so-handy reflexive property to set BD congruent to itself. Now we have two pairs of congruent angles established. We can use the angle side angle postulate if we can show that the included sides are congruent. This is simple because side BD is shared by both triangles. Now we can use the angle side angle postulate to say that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CD. Since the two triangles are congruent, we can state in our seventh step that AB is congruent to CD and DA is congruent to BC. Why? Because of CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. See? A, B, and C, D correspond, as do D, A, and B, C. So they're congruent, and we've proven our theorem. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So now we have a good understanding of triangles and how they fit into parallelograms. Just remember that even though your diagram doesn't have triangles in it, you'll often need to draw them in to do your proof. The triangle congruence postulates are very powerful. Now let's move on to similar triangles. Part 2. Similarities between triangles. So we know that triangles come in a lot of different shapes. They can be acute, obtuse, right, and occasionally Bermuda. Now we're going to learn about a new term that applies to all polygons, including triangles. This term is similar. Two or more polygons are similar when they're proportionally the same size, but not exactly the same size. 
When we write similarity, we use a tilde in place of an equal sign or congruence symbol. Let's take a closer look at what similarity means. When two polygons are similar, we know two things. First, the corresponding angles are congruent, like angle A corresponds and is congruent to angle D. Angle B corresponds and is congruent to angle E. And angle C corresponds and is congruent to angle F. So, in triangles ABC and DEF, the corresponding angles are congruent. Second, the sides will be in proportion. Let's take a closer look at what we mean by sides being in proportion. Corresponding sides are in proportion when the ratio of the lengths of a side, in this case AB, and its corresponding side, DE, equal the ratio of the lengths of two other corresponding sides, say, side BC and its corresponding side EF. Let's set up our ratio. Side AB is 2 inches. Side DE is 5 inches. So we have 2 inches over 5 inches. We set this equal to the length of side BC, 4 inches, over the length of corresponding side EF, 10 inches. So we have our ratio set up. If the sides are in proportion, this will be a true statement. Let's check it by cross multiplying. 2 inches times 10 inches equals 20 square inches. On the other side, we have 4 inches times 5 inches. This equals 20 square inches. So the ratio is preserved and the sides are in proportion. It's easy to prove the other sides are in proportion too, so we'll move on to new topics. Yeah, uh, how can I tell what parts of a polygon correspond to parts of another? Remember what we did with corresponding parts when we talked about CPCTC earlier? All you use is common sense. Let's say you're trying to prove two pentagons similar. Pick sides that look similar and test them against the sides next to it then everything else will fall into place. Like, for example, in pentagons A, B, C, D, E and F, G, H, J, K, we set the lengths of the smallest sides, A, B and F, G, in ratio to one another, along with the lengths of nearby sides B, C and G, H. By solving these ratios, we can easily prove pentagon A, B, C, D, E similar to pentagon F, G, H, J, K. And since the pentagons are similar, that means all the corresponding sides are in proportion as well. In addition, we know that angle A is congruent to angle F, angle B is congruent to angle G, angle C is congruent to angle H, angle D is congruent to angle J, and angle E is congruent to angle K. So there's a lot of information to be had, but enough common sense. Let's get to real deductive thinking. Let's prove the similarity of triangles. Section A, proving the similarity of triangles. Here's the fun part of this similarity stuff. There are three properties we'll use to prove that two triangles are similar. We have the angle-angle similarity postulate, the side-angle-side similarity theorem, and the side-side-side similarity theorem. The angle-angle postulate, side-angle-side theorem, and side-side-side theorem are a lot like the other theorems we use to prove triangles congruent. We can still divide polygons into triangles and use the similarity postulates like we did with the congruent postulates, but remember that these are for similar triangles, not congruent triangles. Let's take a look at our new postulate and theorems and solve a few examples with them. The angle-angle similarity postulate states that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So let's say we have triangle A and triangle B. They both have angles that measure 45 degrees and 55 degrees. By the angle-angle similarity postulate, we can say they're similar. Not congruent, but similar. Next, we have the side angle side similarity theorem, which says that if one angle of one triangle is congruent to one angle of another triangle, and the sides that form the angles are in proportion, not congruent, but in proportion, then the triangles are similar. So for triangles A and B here, we state their similarity because they both have an angle of 55 degrees, and the measures of the sides that form the angle are in proportion. See, our ratios are 2 over 4 and 3 over 6. We cross multiply for 12 equals 12, so the sides are in proportion. According to the side angle side similarity theorem, our triangles are similar. Our last theorem is the side 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 similarity theorem. The side 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 similarity theorem is similar to the example we just showed you a minute ago. It says that if the sides of two triangles are in proportion, then the triangles are similar. So for triangles C and D, we set up ratios. We'll start with the two shorter legs. In triangle C, we have 4 over 6. We set 4 over 6 equal to triangle D's smaller sides. 
5 over 7.5. We cross multiply for 30 equals 30. So the two sides are in proportion. We still need to check the long side, so we'll set it over one of the other sides. It doesn't matter which side we choose. Let's go with the shorter side. We'll set our ratio as the long side over the short side. Triangle C's ratio is 7 over 4. This is the set equal to triangle D's 8.75 over 5. Now we cross multiply for 4 times 8.75 equals 35, as does 7 times 5. All of the sides are in proportion. So, according to the side-side-side similarity theorem, the triangles are similar. What did the acorn say when it grew up? Geometry! Gee, I'm a tree! Get it? <laughs> I got a million of them.